everyone. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV, brought to you by Speedstream. I'm Jim Cardle. One of the hottest, most impactful races in the nation, perhaps, certainly in Texas. We're joined today by House of Representatives member Raul Torres from District 33, running for Senate in South Texas. Raul Torres on the Senate race in South Texas today. Raul, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, Jim. Thank you very much for having me. You are in the middle of the primary season, but more importantly focused on a critical part of the state. Nationwide, folks are talking about the Hispanic dynamics, whether it be from the White House down to the state level. But first, I need to ask you specifically because of the fact that it is a, a race. What differentiates you from your competition? Why are you running this time? I think I can narrow it down to perhaps uh, two or three key components of what are different. Number one, I'm a job creator. I've been creating jobs since 1993. I've created hundreds of jobs. I understand what it's like to make a payroll. I understand the needs of the hardworking families. Uh, that's number one. I've, I've implemented policies. And in fact, this past session, we worked on, on the issue of creating more jobs for Texas. Number two. I'm a much better listener. Unlike some politicians who become bureaucrats and all they do is decide that uh, their idea is the best idea, being a listener I think is an important part of being a public servant and actually putting into practice or the, into policy the ideas and the innovations and the creativity and the desires of the public. And that's what we've done since uh, I got elected in 2010. We got elected because the previous uh, gentleman who held that office quit listening to the people of the district. And we ran on the platform, we were going to listen. And we did. And so we executed the things they asked us to do this past session. Every single component, the three things that, that we ran on, we executed because they said that's what they wanted and that for them that was good government. And, and possibly the number three is that we are not afraid to change our view of government. People are asking for us to find more creative, innovative ways to the many challenges that state government and their communities are facing. And that's what we were doing. Okay, let's drill down on that a little bit. I like what you're saying. Always helps to be one that listens. Uh, you're a member of the Appropriations Committee. State budget was a big issue this last time with the budget crunch. But in particular, down in your area from Corpus Christi, a crescent moon shape, over to McAllen and Edinburgh, Edinburgh down there, um, what are the particular issues? Is education crime, a lot of folks hear about immigration, but what are your issues in particular that you're talking about down there? The big issues are, I think, are three. Jobs, education, border security. Just just two weeks ago when I was down in McAllen, that we had uh, some people from across the border come by and visit uh, one of our pump stations that's, uh, that's right along the river. Okay. And they beat up the, the person, the operator, almost killed him. Ran, and two days later went back to another pump station and ransacked one of them. So you're talking about beat up not verbally in the press no, for physically. not running the operation. This is a crime almost. This is a crime. Okay. The, the thugs are coming, coming, uh, coming across the river and we don't have that kind of security. We need to ensure that the people of South Texas have the security that, that they expect from their government. And on, on the uh, jobs issue, it's rampant across the nation, but in Texas particularly, we don't recognize how fortunate we are sometimes. Is it true down in the valley, the Eagleford Shale and some of the oil and gas, are you doing well economically? What's the lay of the it, economic landscape down there? Down, down in the valley, most of the money is government money. Now, okay. now most of the wealth is concentrated in a small percentage of the population, but most of the population is economically disadvantaged and they depend on some type of state support. Okay. So for them, that's their world. And if you pull that plug on them, they basically don't know what to do. We need to change those dynamics down there so that the people have an equal access to all the opportunities available to them. But we need to be able to give them the resources and opportunities by opening up the markets, bringing in more job creators, and getting them off the government roll so they can be self-sustaining individuals. How about the issue of health care, if, if I may? Um, knowing a little bit about your your incumbent challenge there. Um, there have been some issues in the past where he's cited one way or the other. Is that going to be something you're focusing on? Is health care an issue? Absolutely. Once again, a large percentage of the people down in the valley, Nueces County, are on, are on, uh, depend on government for some support of 
of, of their lives, and mm -hmm. healthcare is one of them. And because of that, we, we this is going to be an issue. Now, uh, the budget is, is getting tighter and tighter. Mm -hmm. We're getting more and more people moving into the state. Less and less people are paying into, in, 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 into the system, and yet the demand is growing. So because of that, we have to find serious solutions to this long-term problem, or we're in deep trouble. And the way the state has been managing, cut, 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 is not going to get us where we need to be, which is provide a good quality of life for our citizens, open opportunities of, as far as access uh, to, to the medical markets and the providers, and that's becoming a bigger challenge the way the, the state has been approaching that, that aspect of the budget. Do, do constituents down there feel like the services are being provided by the state or do they feel like they've been thrown under the bus or what? They the feel like they've been thrown under the bus. It's just the way they look at things. It's always a problem to have the actual implementation yeah. and the dollars reach to where they are. I imagine that's, right. that's what you're talking that's about. That's right. And now with managed care, uh, which is designed to save the state money, but however, according to them, they're not being given less access because of managed care, uh, because they don't know how to work within the system yet. And so they feel, uh, without question, a little concerned about that. How about uh, the issue, you're a CPA, you deal with numbers, but uh, in, not in particular for the budget, but as it pertains to counting votes. You're in a a bifurcated district demographically, it's arguably a Republican and a Democrat and or a Democrat district based on the candidate. What are the feelings down there in particular on things like voter ID? And we've had other candidates come in and talk about the trust of the election system down there. Talk about that a little bit. Do the constituents feel like the system right now is something they believe in? No. The system down there, further further down in the south, like in the Oasis County, it's a deep concern for voter integrity. Okay. Right? They understand that. But they also understand that the only, that, that there's individuals or groups or processes taking place that can corrupt that integrity. They, the talk on the street is clear. They know that. Mm -hmm. They want a sound system that works for them. The only people that are complaining, Jim, are the people that want to win elections uh, in a way that, which would I say, is unethical, inappropriate, or possibly even borders uh, breaking the law. Well, I was going to ask you because State Rep. Aaron Pena, State Rep. Jose Alcide have, have talked about, and most Texans, let alone even politically uh, educated people, the politiqueras are a system where essentially street money, votes are bought. Talk That's about correct. that if you can. That's a real thing that, 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 uh, that is taking place in the Valley. That is part of their culture. All right. It's, it's like in the old day, uh, the only way to get water was you would have to go out to the well and draw it and bring it into the house. It's part of how they live down there. But that is changing. People understand that in order for them to move forward, they have to change the way they get things done. And they see the corruption. They see the mismanagement. And they see that the average citizen doesn't get ahead because there's a lid kept on them and they want something better for their children. I think that's got to be a, a, a issue or something that's going to be a focus down there as your race becomes mm -hmm. more uh, watched and visible. Uh, again, folks, we're visiting with State Representative Raul Torres from District 33 running for the Senate down in South Texas. To wrap up, Representative, and, and let you get on the road here, talk about you've been a leader in technology for the campaign and reaching out to your constituents you have an online presence. Talk about how you're reaching out to constituents down there on technology. Well, thank you, Jim. That, uh, we have an, an old way of doing things and a new way of doing things. Some people are just still in limbo. Mm -hmm. We realized a long time ago that the future is in our youth and the future to really uh, transform, uh, transform in our economy and transform in our education is to, is to embrace the future and not run away from it. So we, we decided we were going to do that. So we, we, we communicate to, via YouTube. We have an, our own YouTube channel, Taurus TV, T, uh, TX TV. We have our own Twitter account. We're the most uh, followed uh, person on Twitter in our area. Uh, we have uh, our own Facebook presence. Uh, we, 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 we are reaching out in the media that connects predominantly the youthful voter because they are the ones that's going to be our future leaders with messaging that's important to them. 
So Governor Perry, for instance, was famous last election cycle for not going to the editorial boards. It sounds like you may or may not think about that, but technology is the way as opposed to the old style media in That's the correct, valley. without question. And, and by the way, we are thinking about that, but, but that's the way most people are connected today. Whether you're a young professional, a young high school student that just turned 18 and can vote, people are reaching the media. And another interesting aspect is that Hispanics watch more YouTube video than any other media out there as, as, as a population group. So this is how we communicate with them. And it shows in the, in, in the number of followers and the number of views we're getting. Well, State Representative Raul Torres, we're going to have to leave it there, folks. Be sure and go to electraltorres.com for more information. Be sure to tune back in for future editions of Texas Insider TV. Representative, we want to have you back. Thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate it. I'm Jim Cardle. Remember, you're either an insider or you're not. Thanks for joining us.